So I'd like to thank the organizer for their kind invitation. And uh, so my task here uh, will be to state and justify, maybe, uh, a theorem about, <coughs> about the freeness of uh, the cohomology of some modular curves over the Hecke algebra. So there will be some Hecke algebra. So these are modules over the Hecke algebra, and we will. Can try. So let's. Is it better? Well. <laughs> no. Higher, still higher. Cannot be higher, no. I don't know. So, <clears throat> so the, the purpose of the talk is to, to state and uh, try to justify this kind of isomorphism. So this is completely false. Um, it will be true only after localization at, at some uh, nice maximal ideal of the Hecke algebra. And these are the so-called non-Eisenstein uh, maximal ideals which will be defined. And actually, to prove this amounts to proving some nice property of the ring TM itself. It's the same, I mean, same proof proves uh, this, and also that the ring TM is a Gorenstein ring, has the Gorenstein property. So, so that's the purpose of the talk. And uh, now, first, I define the notion of Gorenstein-ness. So this will be used uh, heavily uh, in the in, uh, next talks, for instance, in Udi Deschalit's talk. Okay, this is uh, an important point in Wise's proof. So it's a property of local Noetherian rings. So we take R, uh, Noetherian local ring. So let's say M is its maximal ideal, and uh, K is the residue field. And let's say that its dimension is D. So it's a ring of cruel dimension D. Then you say that it has the Gorenstein property and of dimension D, let's say. So we abbreviate this as GD, so Gorenstein of dimension D. If the X groups are as follows. Zero for I greater than D, and one dimensional over the residue field if I is exactly D. So maybe it doesn't speak so much uh, at, uh, a priori. Well, let's say that it means that R is a good ring for local duality of modules over R. So we have a nice duality theory in this case. So that's the Gorenstein property. But actually, we will deal only with rings of dimension 1 or 0. And uh, more precisely, we will deal only with rings which are, so local Noetherian, but moreover, from now on, R is a finite flat ZP algebra for the rest of the talk. And uh, we denote by R bar the quotient R modulo PR. We will use this notation throughout the talk. So in that case, we have a, a proposition for the Gorenstein property. We have equivalences. So five, the, sta the following statements are equivalent. So, one, R is G1, two, R bar is G0, three, um, the part of R bar killed by Gothic M is one dimensional over K. Very small K, which is equivalent and trivially to the fact that the uh, FP dual of R bar, so R bar star, 
is just home r bar fp is free over r bar as r bar module and for by some Nakayama's lemma the zp dual of r is free over r so that's not hard that's an exercise i just give a hint for the exercise okay so so exercise okay and the hint for the first three statements, so for one equivalent to two equivalent to three, you have to use the exact sequence of multiplication by P. So this is a short exact sequence of R module, and you apply the X functor, and you get. So what you get is, uh, well, that the X one of KR is uh, the x0 of k r bar over r bar. So this is over r. And this is the, canonically, this Gothic m portion of r bar. And for uh, the, the rest, it's just Nakayama's lemma repeat, repeatedly. Well, apply Nakayama's lemma. to R, um, sorry, to Gothic M, RESP, TR. This is also a nice ideal to which you can apply the Kayama's lemma. And you get the result. Okay, so that's all about the Gorenstein property. Now, let's look at Heike algebras. So we start with the prime P greater than 2, an integer n whose p-adic order is less than 1. And we consider the modular curve x1n over q. So this is the modular curve which classifies elliptic curves with a point of order exactly n, or generalized elliptic curves. Um, so this is, a sl this is slightly different to the, to the curve considered by Dick Gross. Uh, in this curve, the cusp 0 is rational, and the infinity cusp is not, while on his it was the converse. So this classifies points of exactly or exact order n instead of mu n inside of the curve. It's different, okay? So, but anyway, this is the curve considered by Wiles, and uh, they are isomorphic over cyclotomic field, and well, it's just up to a veil involution, I mean, these curves are equivalent. Mm. So, um, we consider now a subgroup H, of Z mod N, Z star, any, sub any subgroup. And uh, we consider the, the curve XQ quotient of X1N by H. And it's Jacobian. So for us, the Jacobian is the covariant uh, Jacobian, so-called Albanese variety. So it means that when we have algebraic correspondences, we use covariant functoriality. So that's the Jacobian, but viewed covariantly. And uh, inside, we can well, so in, in the endomorphism rings of this abelian variety over Q, we consider the Hecke algebra. So this is the subring generated by the Hecke operators Tn's for all, for all n, and by the diamond operators A for all A, let's say, in Z mod NZ, modulo H, H doesn't act, well, also plus minus one, actually, as noted by Yaptop, 
there is no need of plus minus one. So, uh, so it's a nice uh, subring here. It's commutative and it's finite and flat over z. Okay, and now we have to to choose a maximal ideal. So it will satisfy some conditions. So I call those conditions non-Eisenstein. So the maximal ideal we choose is as follows. So M is a maximal ideal satisfying the three conditions. Now we choose some. Choose M maximal ideal and we fix it of T such that so the first condition is that the residual characteristic is P. T modulo M is K of characteristic P. Second, there exists a Galois representation rho M. So from the absolute Galois group GQ to GL2K. Satisfying the well, usual conditions. Okay, maybe I don't have enough room. Ah, okay, so. <coughs> so the second condition is, as usual, the trace and the determinant are fixed. So there exists such a representation satisfying trace. So first it is, so, uh, so rho m is unramified outside np and for l or prime, for any prime l not dividing np, the, the trace of rho m of Frobenius l is congruent to tl modulo gothic m and the determinant is congruent to L diamond L modulo the same maximal ideal. Small exercise. This implies that the representation rho m is odd. It's very important. This means that rho m of complex conjugation is equivalent to 1 minus 1. So this is the second condition. And the last condition, the non-Eisenstein-ness, is that uh, rho m is absolutely reducible, or just irreducible, the same. So we fix such an ideal, and we define the completion Tm of T at m. Uh, so it's, it's again, well, it's a finite flat ZP algebra, and more, actually it's better than that. It is a direct factor of TP, which is T tensor ZP. It's a local, it's a local factor. So it's a ring, it's a ring exactly of the type we had in section one. Okay, so now we can state the main theorem and its corollaries. So, red. First, we put a definition. We said that the maximal ideal M is ordinary.
if P does not divide N and TP is not in M, or P divides N and UP is not in M. And we, we recall a theorem. Actually, we will prove it in a, in a particular case just later. So the theorem is due to Andrew Wiles. Uh, so we fix that GP a decomposition group at P, any decomposition group. Then, if the representation rho m exists, then its restriction to GP, oh, okay, if m is ordinary, of course, m ordinary. Well, so then the representation exists. Um, this is equivalent to an upper triangular representation with chi 2 unramified. So from this, we can give an, another definition. So we will see that later in some special case. So definition, we say that M is, di is GP distinguished Maybe, well, you see, uh, GP distinguished if it is ordinary and the characters on the diagonal are distinct. And the characters are distinct. And uh, that will be crucial in the theorem. We need this assumption. So uh, for us, the ring R in the sequel is just TM. And the ring R bar, therefore, is the Artinian ring TM mod P. OK. And now the theorem, main theorem. So maybe I call this theorem 1. And this is the main theorem of the talk, theorem 2. It's that uh, for uh, a non-Eisenstein M, if, so then, if P does not divide N, then uh, okay, no, sorry, consider, so let V, v uh, be the point of P torsion over Q bar of the Jacobian of the modular curve localized at M. So if you want, this means tensor, uh, tensor TM over TP. Okay? Then, If P does not divide N, then V is free over R bar and R bar, uh, sorry. Okay. So if P does not divide N or P divides N and M is distinguished, GP distinguished. Then, then V is free over R bar, and we prove at the same time that R bar is G0. So that's the main theorem. Before sketching the proof, I list uh, some corollaries and I prove them. That the corollaries are easy to deduce from the theorem. So first, R is G1, and so hum RZP 
is free over R, of course. Second, if we consider the Tate module of J, uh, localized at M, and also its ZP linear dual, they are both free over TM, or rank 2, are free of rank 2 over TM. And the third is that the homology, H1, well, homology or cohomology, but well, let's state it with the homology, localized at M, is free of rank 2, again, over TM. Well, so a remark. This statement before localization or after localization at an Eisenstein prime is not known to be true. It's just, uh, well, there, is no, there are no counterexamples, but there are no proofs. So, I mean, this statement needs the localization at an Eisenstein prime, for the t at a non Eisenstein prime for the time being. And, well, I don't know where, whether it's true or not otherwise. So, the proof is very easy. Well, one is okay. I mean, one is just section one. See the first paragraph. So two for M is two is just so for M it's just Nakayama's lemma. Well, uh, because well, you can just notice that M modulo P M is V. So you, you, so you apply Nakayama's, Nakayama's lemma. And for M dual, so there is a trick. Actually, it will be useful later also, which is that, well, on the Tate module, we have a perfect pairing. We consider the veil pairing. So it's a Galois equivariant pairing from the Tate module of the Jacobian, or any abelian variety actually, maybe principally polarized maybe, uh, to ZP of 1. So it's Galois equivariant, it's perfect, so called the veil pairing. The problem is that this is not Hecke equivariant, it satisfies the formula that if you have some Hecke operator T, TXY is X adjoint of TY. So it's not bilinear, it's a sesquilinear. So, uh, in fact, there is a, a way of twisting this pairing so that it becomes Hecke equivariant. Namely, we introduce the veil uh, involution W zeta. So zeta is a primitive nth root of unity. We fix any zeta in mu n primitive. So W zeta, I describe it on the modular curve. Then you apply Albanese functoriality. So, if you have EP, you go to E modulo, the cyclic group generated by P, and uh, the point Q bar, where Q bar is the image of the point Q on E, satisfying PQ is zeta. So what is this pairing? This is the E n over E. So this is the veil pairing on the elliptic curve E. So this is the definition of the veil involution W zeta on the modular curve, then you so it defines an automorphism on, an automorphism on GQ, JQ, and then you twist by this automorphism the veil pairing. So, still are. Oh. Yes, hello. Blue. No. Then. Okay. So now we define the pairing, maybe, this 
kind of bracket, a bracket x, y, to be x and w, zeta, y. So it's still perfect. It's Hecke bilinear. It satisfies t, x, y equal x, t, y. It's no longer uh, a Galois equivariant, but almost Galois equivariant. And uh, so at, at least it is Hecke bilinear. And so by this pairing, we can identify. So we can localize now at Gothic M. The, the it's still a perfect pairing. And so we get that M is isomorphic to M dual over R after localization at Gothic M using this pairing. And so, uh, so we have the freeness of M dual as well. And for three, it is just uh, the definition of the Albanese variety. This is the, so we have a, a canonical isomorphism of this with the Tate module of the Albanese variety. And so uh, this is a Hecke, this is Hecke uh, linear. So we can localize at Gothic M and we are done. This is by, def well, by, by the transcendental definition of, the, of J. So we get <coughs> the corollaries. Now we have to at least give the strategy of the proof of theorem 2 and then sketch of the proof. So first strategy of the proof. Well, we will focus on one, one case, okay? So I explain which cases we, we don't prove. So if P does not divide N, it's a, I, I refer you to the, all the arguments are in Mazur's paper. Uh, the so-called uh, modular curves and the Eisenstein ideal. And the, Eisen, and the Eisenstein ideal. Section 14. That's very instructive to look at this paper. So I refer to that. So if P divides N, there are two cases, and we will treat only one of them. So if P divides N, there are two possibilities. So we consider the determinant of rho M, and we restrict it to the inertia at P. It's a power of omega, the Teichmüller character, omega to the A, for some A. So two, two possibilities. A is 1 mod P minus 1. Sorry, A is not, or A is 1 mod P minus 1. So if A is not congruent to 1 modulo P minus 1, and of course uh, the ideal M is uh, GP distinguished, then, well, it's just like Mazur Wiles. I mean, uh, this is not the case I want to treat. Okay, it's maybe more classical. And this case is less classical. So uh, here, you, you only need to assume that M is ordinary, because actually, it's a simple remark that the GP distinguishability is automatic in that case. Is automatic since the characters one is ramified and the other is unramified is automatic you have chi 1 restricted to uh, inertia which is omega and chi 2 which restricted to inertia which is trivial is one so they are distinct on the inertia so that's all right and so I, I want to, to focus on, on this case I mean, sketch the proof in this case but all of the ideas of the other cases occur already there I mean and uh, there are so many things to say. One has to focus on something. So.
Okay. So I describe the steps. So P divides N. So we write N equal N prime P. So P does not divide N prime. So there are four steps plus a zero step, which is left as an exercise. So step zero. Step zero is that, so we have the diagram like this, x1 n, p, uh, x1 n prime p go to x by the quotient, by, by quotienting by h. And also there is another curve which has been introduced also by the up top, namely x1 n prime p. So this classifies elliptic curves with a point of order n and a cyclic group of order p, uh, n prime. So we, and what I, what I claim is that uh, to prove the result for uh, x, it's equivalent to prove the result only for this curve. We, so we will focus on this curve. So it's, a, it's one case, one possible case, but it's enough to prove the result for this case. So I just claim that if I consider the Jacobian, so I take the p divisible group of this, I claim it is canonically isomorphic to the analog for uh, this curve. So this is left as an exercise. And so from now on, the curve x is exactly this one. So actually, now I, I will denote by x and j that x will be x1 n prime p, and j will be j1 n prime p. OK, from now on. So what you have to use is that on here the successive, I mean the, Gal the Galois irreducible subquotients are irreducible, while uh, the defect between those two things are uh, reducible. These are uh, mu p or, I mean groups of. Uh, so that's what you have to use. So now the serious things. OK, maybe one word about what is gained by focusing on this curve. OK, why do we focus on here? This is because this curve has almost, well, almost semi-stable reduction at p, which means that at least what? It, it means the following. It means that the, the special fiber consists in two smooth reduced curves intersecting transversally, while uh, for coverings, they are not reduced. And it's, it's important to have reduced curves to apply some machinery of Renault and so on. So here we have almost a stable reduction at P. Yeah. So, OK, so uh, step one is that M ordinary implies that there exists a short exact sequence so I describe what we prove in the four steps. So the first step, we have to prove that the ordinarity implies there exists a short exact sequence um, of R bar GP modules. This is the group algebra. So 0 goes to VE, goes, uh, sorry, goes to V0, goes to V, goes to VE. So this is an exact sequence of so it's Hecke equivariant and Galois equivariant, local Galois equivariant. So with the properties that here, all the irreducible subquotients are ramified. And here, uh, all irreducible subquotients are unramified. And uh, moreover, one can, one can say something more, namely that uh, there is an identification of VE with the uh, dual on V0 mu p. So, uh, or Z, maybe Z mod p. That's, do I, I need a cartridge? mu p as r bar 
IP module. Well, either you, you, you make this exercise that it is a inertia equivariant, or you forget about that. Just R bar isomorphism. That's the, so that's what you can add. So this is the step one. Find V0 and VE with these properties, and moreover, they satisfy this. So I am describing the steps. Then I sketch the uh, proof of them, if I have some time. So that's the first step. So we assume that we, we succeed in proving V0 is free. <coughs> then VE is free. And so V is isomorphic to R uh, bar square and R bar is G0. So we are done. So I claim that yeah, step two tells you that this is enough to prove this, and then you are done. Theorem is proven. So this will be step two. Step three is to, is to prove something like v0 is free, is free, but not exactly for v0, for some sub-thing, a priori. And so the sub-thing is the following. So we introduce the Neron model. of j over zp, and we consider the p-torsion point. It's, a, it's not a finite flat group scheme. It's a quasi-finite flat group scheme. But if we take the multiplicative part of it, it is a finite flat group scheme of multiplicative type. And then we take the qp bar point. We call it uh, script V. Okay, this, so this means take the multiplicative part, the largest multiplicative finite flat subgroup scheme of this quasi-finite flat subgroup uh, group scheme. Take the multiplicative part. Okay, then what you can prove is that this is free over R bar. Oh, so, uh, no, sorry, okay, that's the hardest part. No, the, the not so hard is to prove that it is isomorphic. Actually, it, it is equal to, to V0. Okay, that's step three, that's not too hard. And step four is where the real work is. Step four is to prove that V is free. So V is isomorphic to R bar. Uh, okay. Uh, this relies, so this is the, the key point, and it, it, it relies uh, on the so-called uh, multiplicity one, uh, I mean, Q expansion, well, multiplicity one for the Q expansion in characteristic P argument due to Barry Mazur. So it's Barry Mazur's multiplicity one argument. So I don't know whether I, I'll have time to say something about that, maybe. So, this goes up. Now, let's sketch the proof of those steps. Okay. 
So actually one shows more than the existence of a VE of v and V0 for V, but for the full divisible group. So we consider the full divisible group D, which is JP infinity of Q bar localized at M. So if you want, uh, D of P is V. V is just the first step, the first layer of this P divisible group. So, uh, so we want to prove that this has a decomposition uh, into P divisible groups as uh, stated with the properties, exactly the same properties as stated. So uh, for that, we can use an isogeny argument. We say that D, this P divisible group is isogenous, well, as a, as a P divisible group, is isogenous to a product of P divisible groups AF of P infinity localized at some primes. So F runs over, so these are, uh, what can be said about those Fs? These are modular forms, so for gamma 1 n prime p, which are eigen, uh, which are eigen, with eigenvalues, let's say, in a, uh, OK, so. Yeah. We consider the field of the eigenvalues, the field generated by the eigenvalues. It's a number field. And we, we fix, so it is contained in Q bar. We fix an embedding into QP bar once for all, an embedding of, so this is fixed. So this defines a prime ideal, maximal ideal in uh, KF. And so the Fs are those such that their representation rho F is congruent to rho Gothic M modulo gothic p. Okay, we fix this embedding and we consider all the f's occurring here, which are uh, eigenforms, and such that, uh, so the, the, the Galois representation rho f associated to, so, the Galois representation rho f associated to f at the prime p is Redu reduces to rho m modulo gothic p. Okay. So you have an isogeny between these two uh, groups, p divisible groups, and so you are uh, you are left with uh, this case. So you treat separately each of these cases. And for this case, what you notice is that these forms. to say something stupid. Uh, maybe not in you. So you have two cases. Okay, I treat on, only the case where uh, those forms are P nu. So if F is P nu, yeah, if F is P nu, Then you are in the, so you have toric reduction for this abelian variety. AF has toric reduction, purely multiplicative type over ZP. And then this means that, uh, in fact, you can lift the torus inside, you can lift the torus in this P divisible group. So uh, this is a Renault argument. Rigidity of tor tori, rigidity of tori, you can find uh, a torus in this p divisible group so that the quotient has no point, is, is uh, etal with trivial uh, special fiber. So, so we, you will have some torus, there exists a torus in so, some p divisible group or maybe gm to something, just a, well mu p infinity. So there exists a mu p infinity to some power s contained in this p-divisible group, such that the quotient uh, here, maybe, so this, uh, this will be nothing but d0, and this will be, in fact, de. Uh, this will be a quasi-finite etal with trivial special fiber. With trivial special fiber. Special fiber. 
So you take the Galois module, and this is exactly the desired decomposition. This is the, for F, at least for the F, is the desired decomposition. So this is the case where F is P nu. It could be P old, I think. I don't read the case P old, okay? There is another argument if F is P old. Okay. Okay, there is another argument if F is P old. I don't want to. So. So, as I said, this proves uh, theorem one in the case where f is, well, if, well, yeah, uh, in, in, the, in the case where determinant of rho m is omega, we proved theorem one. Uh, to finish the construction, so now we have this d, d and, d0 and de, we have to prove this duality statement. It's again the twisted veil pairing, okay? We, we, uh, we have this decomposition now. So again, there is a, a twisted veil pairing, uh, which is a Hecke equivariant. And uh, you need some Galois property. You, you see that um, VE, so sorry, you see that HOM V0 mu P as a Galois module is the largest quotient of HOM V mu P with uh, unramified irreducible subquotients, because dual of MUP is unramified with, with unramified successive, well, irreducible subquotients. And so, since this duality that I, uh, this twisted veil pairing establishes an isomorphism like this. This is the characterization of VE. So this is VE. So we have this, uh, this argument. So now step two is maybe relaxing compared to step one. Uh, it's just algebra, I mean, just, uh, just elementary algebra. Well, maybe I, I, um, I state the, the lemma. Uh, the point is that this exact sequence, maybe star, this exact sequence splits over R bar. It splits over R bar, not as Galois uh, exact sequence, but as Hecke uh, module. And the, the argument is the following. You, so it's an exercise. You choose, take sigma in the inertia, and uh, s such that omega of sigma is a generator of fp cross. You lift it in zp. So it's, a, it's p minus first root of unity. And uh, then I claim that there exists an integer h sufficiently large such that v is the direct sum of the kernel of sigma minus omega tilde sigma to the h plus kernel of sigma minus 1 to the h. And this is exactly v0. Therefore, this is isomorphic to ve. This is, a, uh, R, this is an R bar uh, linear decomposition. Okay, so it's an easy, it's basically it's Cayley Hamilton, I mean Hamilton Cayley theorem. Yeah. So you, you get this decomposition, and now the argument is just abstract algebra once you have this. So.
Yeah, so once you have this, this gives you a decompo uh, So we are, we are doing step two, so it means we assume that V0 is free. So if we have this decomposition, this means that we can write on one hand V as something isomorphic to R bar plus something isomorphic to its dual by step one. Okay, by step one we can write this on one hand, and on the other hand we have another decomposition of V by using complex conjugation, namely uh, complex conjugation, so P is odd of course, so complex conjugation gives a decomposition, induces a decomposition V equal V plus plus V minus, so this is the plus one eigenspace and minus one eigenspace. So we have these two decompositions, and these are, of course, R bar linear decomposition. So we have these two decompositions, and now there is, so we are over this local ring R bar, now there is a theorem called Krul-Akizuki theorem, telling you that if you have a module admitting two decompositions into indecomposable modules, these modules are indecomposable, so they cannot be written as direct sums, then the indecomposable components are isomorphic up to permutation. So we can say from this by Krulakizuki that uh, v, v plus minus is isomorphic to R bar and V minus plus is isomorphic to R bar dual. What we want is that those two things are isomorphic. So for that, we just uh, find that these things have the... So, the lemma is the following. Uh, dimension of V plus of Gothic M is equal to dimension of V minus of Gothic M over small k. This is the part killed by Gothic M. So maybe it's an exercise. <laughs> that's, that's easy. And from this lemma, what you get is that dimension of R bar of Gothic M over K is equal to dimension of R bar dual of Gothic M over K. But that Pont by Pontryagin duality, this is the same as home of R modulo M K, uh, e FP. Okay, so this is <coughs> home K FP, and this is a k-vector space of dimension 1. So this is k. This k-vector space is dimension 1. This is non-degeneracy of the trace. So we get that this is one-dimensional. So this is 1, and that's a criterion for R bar to be G0. So we, we get R bar is G0. And at the same time, we, we find that these two things are isomorphic. Therefore, V is free of rank 2. V is free, so we get the theorem. So the point is to prove the freeness of V0. And so. Sorry, higher. Uh, so this is the red one. I will be very brief on step three and say something on step four. But anyway, I need the notations of step three. So, uh, so I, the point will be to to introduce uh, sub I mean, to, to separate the Jacobian J into a toric. Uh, I mean, uh, a variety with toric reduction and a variety with good reduction. So for that, we consider the two coverings. Namely, uh, if we have a point E, P, C, so this is order N and this is a cyclic group of order P, we go to uh, just E, P, forget about C, and the other one is 
do the same after, twist, after uh, applying the veil involution, so the atkin linear involution, so E modulo C and uh, uh, P bar. P bar means the image of P in this quotient. So we have these two coverings. So this defines by covariant functoriality, this defines a map from the Jacobian of this curve to J1n prime square. These two maps, okay? And we consider the abelian variety, which is the neutral component of the kernel. So it's an abelian subvariety. <coughs> So it has, so if you, well, for instance, if you think in terms of modular forms, these are modular forms um, for gamma, so this corresponds to modular forms for gamma 1 n prime p. This will be uh, the old forms, the p old forms, and the kernel has tangent space which consists in p new, p new forms. So this has toric reduction, and the quotient will be isogenous to this. So. So in fact, we introduce the kernel A and the quotient B. So this variety is isogenous to this. So this has good reduction at P, good reduction over ZP. And this has pure toric reduction over ZP. So that's the use of this A, pure redu toric reduction over ZP. And this is an exact sequence of abelian varieties over Q, and this is compatible with the action of Hecke, as you see, for instance, on the modular forms. I mean, old forms and new forms are stable under Hecke. So this is compatible with the action of T, Hecke algebra. So uh, now from this exact sequence, uh, Barry Mazur deduces an exact sequence of finite flat group schemes. Namely, you take the p-torsion point and take the connected component, neutral component of this. So this is over Zp, okay? And this is exact. There is a short exact sequence. So this means that this is identified to the kernel of this map by this closed immersion, and this divided by that identifies to the quotient. Short exact sequence. So it's not obvious because they don't have a good reduction. It's only semi-stable reduction, so there is something to prove. So it's only on the connected component that it is true. It's not true before. But anyway, we have this exact sequence. And, uh, okay, now I skip the argument which proves that from this we get that V is equal to V0. Okay, there is an argument from this to deduce that, but now I will use this to, well, to, to tell something about the, f the freeness of, of V. Just one word, actually, because my time is... One word. Because since we are dealing with multiplicative type subgroups, they are totally characterized by their tangent space. So actually, what we need to prove is only, so step four, What's, what, so we want V is free over R bar, and what we need to prove only is that the tangent space of this uh, multiplicative part over FP bar, for instance, is free over R bar tensor FP bar. So that's what we need to prove. It's enough because this is multiplicative type. And for that, actually, this tangent space is just the same as a corollary of the, the exactness of this sequence, this is just the same as the tangent space of the, of the Jacobian J of Fp bar. This is just equal. Oh, localized at M. I mean, we are local, local at Gothic M. 
Yeah, okay, this is an exact sequence, but what we need is the local things at m. We localize at m. So, uh, oh, that's what we need to, to study. And now by, by Nakayam, so in fact, we, we consider only the thing over fp. It's even better. And so what we need to consider is this modulo gothic m. So what we, what we want to prove is that this is free over r bar. And for that, we apply Nakayama's lemma. And we consider the quotient modulo m. And so uh, it is in duality. Mm -hmm. This is in duality with the h0 of x1 n prime p over fp regular differentials killed by gothic m because modulo m is in duality with the part killed by gothic m. So here there is an argument using the uh, almost semi-stability of this curve. It's not obvious, but okay, th there is some uh, duality argument. We use some Serre duality or maybe Grothendieck duality, uh, which is true because this is almost semi-stable. And uh, so the point now is that this part killed by, so what is th this? As I said, it is the union of two nice smooth curves, one containing the infinity cusp and the other containing the zero cusp. So they are nice smooth curves. They intersect transversally. Um, well, outside the super singular uh, uh, j equals zero and something, 12 uh, cube. So uh, the point is that this will, the part killed by m will be identified to the h zero of only one of them because of some high eichler shimura formulas due to Mazur and Wiles, which have not been explained. It's a generalization of those which have been presented by Jabtop. They are slightly more general. And so you, you will have to study this thing. Uh, omega, well, m. And this is one dimensional by Q expansion principle. Okay, this will be one dimensional, so this will be equal to this, and this will be one dimensional by the Q expansion principle, because here you, you have this infinity cusp, so you can consider the Q expansion at this point, and uh, you show that this map is injective into the form, well, so I don't have time for that, it's quite, uh, I need 20 or 30 minutes to explain that. So, well, so once you are here, you use the Q expansion principle and you get multiplicity one. This is the combinatory, uh, combinatorial properties of Hecke operators, just like in characteristic, characteristic zero, once you are dealing with uh, 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 I mean, uh, Q expansions, you have multiplicity one by the combinatorics of the Hecke operators. The point is to go to these uh, formal power series and that's the Q expansion principle. So I stop here. And I refer you to the, to the section 2.1 of Wiles, of course. 2.1 of the paper of Wiles. So this is lemma 2.2. Two. If you want to see the proof, this is lemma 2.2 two in this section. Okay, and I stop here.